Bingo. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone to this Tuesday night all heat team call. My name is Lisa Blaisdell. I'm a national marketing director and I am so excited to be hosting this call tonight. And Welcome to everyone that is on uh, the greater heat team. I think it's such a great thing that we join forces together as a team. I always believe that we are better together and there really is power and great energy in teams. So I love that we've been doing this for a while now and we're able to um, use you know, all of the different relationships that we have within the Juice Bus company and invite really special people that we have great relationships with to share um, their incredible knowledge and how they have built a Juice Plus franchise. And I am so excited and honored to be introducing um, to you guys someone who is a dear friend of mine, Deanna Christofferson. She truly has such a heart for people and for doing this business. And Phil and I have just been really blessed to spend time with her and Bob over the years, and they're just a ton of fun. But I want to read you guys her bio. And Deanna, can you hear me okay? I can hear okay, you. Good. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. You're good. So I want to introduce Deanna because I know that there are a lot of new people that are joining the Juice Plus company right yeah. now, and you may not know Deanna and her story, and she certainly has a very exciting story. So Deanna Christofferson is the original mom on a mission and always wanted to be home to her three sons. Because of her success of her Juice Plus business, she has been able to stay home with her boys and she was able to rehire, retire her husband, Bob, in 1999 and he is a stay-at-home dad. That was seven years into her business, amazing. Deanna's background is in the health and fitness industry where she worked part-time for over 18 years as a certified fitness counselor, personal trainer, and aerobics instructor. She graduated with a BA in hotel and resort management from Chico back in 1986. Go Chico. Mm -hmm. She has been a student of nutrition for over 25 years and has been lecturing on health and nutrition both nationally and internationally since 1996. Deanna qualified for the title of national marketing director in the spring of 1999 and then she built her husband's business also to national marketing director three years later. She is a member of the prestigious 100 Club and she will tell you that one of her biggest joys is to help empower, encourage, and inspire others to be better and achieve more. Her and Bob are native Californians, but in 2006, they left us in Southern California, and they moved to Northern California to build their dream life in the country. They love the fact that they get to wake up every morning and work their Juice Plus business together from the comfort of their home. They will both tell you that you can make your dreams come true. All you have to do is have a vision, a plan, and a desire, and the determination to make those dreams come true. Deanna, thank you so much. You're such an awesome trainer. What I did not mention, what isn't in your bio, is that you have closed our national conventions. You are one of the best trainers in this company. So, girlfriend, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, well uh, it, it, it doesn't always, always have, have to be pretty. pretty. So, so and I'm, and I'm hearing, hearing you. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm going to mute me. Okay, that. So don't I? Just so you know, don't unmute that because I'm in my headset. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's it's a thrill, and like I said, it doesn't have to always be pretty. And we work from home. And the scariest part about Zoom is that we got to get all pretty. And I had plans to get all pretty, but I thought, you know what? This is me. <laughs> and those of you who know me know that. You know what, the beauty is we get to work from home and that we're touching lives each and every day. And that is what really fires me up today. Because honestly, I wouldn't even have to work anymore. I mean, this business has been amazing. We've done it for 20 years now. But I feel such a responsibility to my team and my cross point buddies like you guys. My goodness, Chris and Nikki, we've been friends for 20 years. Lisa, I met you in Southern California years ago. You are in a different team, but you are part of family, you know, and that's what I really want you to understand is that I am not financially connected to any of you. Chris and Nikki aren't financially connected to us, nor is Lisa, but we are one big family. And I know that if I ever needed anybody, that my Juice Plus family would be there like that. So just quickly with the story is, um, you know, 20 years ago, I didn't, I wasn't looking for for anything. I was already a very busy 32-year-old young mom with a two-year-old, four-year-old, and an eight-year-old. 
I was teaching aerobics. I was personal training. My husband was working 60, 70 hours a week. This might sound familiar to a lot of people. We were flat out busy and I could not put one more thing on my plate. But when I ran into my sponsor, who is Catherine Lee, who is an amazing woman, if you've ever had the opportunity to be around her, you, you know she is a blessing. She blessed me that day in the grocery store when she shared with me, and it could have been scary for her to open her mouth because I could have said no, but she shared anyway when I said, you feel like this produce has no nutritional value in it. And she says, that's why I do what I do. And I said, what do you do? And she says, I work with a company that put fruits and vegetables in a capsule. And I immediately got excited. I was one of those five percenters. It doesn't happen all the time, but I immediately got the concept and I wanted to learn more. I got myself educated. I, I had a huge why, which I'm going to spend some time talking about because that's really the most important thing. And I just kind of learned as I went. I set goal of $500 a month and I hit that and then it was $1,500 and $2,000 and it was the house payment and it was okay. Now it's a house payment and a family vacation and the house payment and a family vacation and a new car. And I just kind of, you know, continued to set personal goals. And three years into my Juice Plus business, I was able to retire my husband. I went national marketing director three, three years later. He went national marketing director and he was able to be a stay-at-home dad about 15 years ago. And it's been a huge blessing. And because of that, we have a life that most people only dream about. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. So um, it was funny. Lisa gave me my homework and she said, this, we're going to call it straight talk. And I said, great, because I am a straight talker. So that's the name of the talk. And my goal for you this evening is I want to share with you some tips and some skills that I really believe are critically important in building a hugely successful juice plus business. Not just a little hobby on the side where you're going to make a thousand bucks. Talking about an amazing business that is going to touch lives. Because what I want you to know is that your paycheck is a direct reflection on the lives you touch. So remember that. It isn't about the money. Did I need money? You bet. My husband went two years without a paycheck. He was self-employed. We needed the money. But even though we needed the money, the money is not what drove me. What drove me is the lives I could touch in the process. And then later, of course, this company had this amazing mission statement was to inspire healthy living around the world. And I was already doing that. 20 years ago, when I looked at this product, I thought, oh my God, everybody I know has to be on this product. And I felt a responsibility to share it. So the most important thing, and I know you guys have heard this before, but it really bears repeating, is that you must know why you are doing this business. So knowing your why is tip number one. So I'm gonna be giving you some tips. I'm gonna tell you which tip I'm giving you, and that's tip number one, knowing your why. So. Really, what there needs to be is a deep, burning desire that surrounds your why. You know, this sounds kind of warped and demented, but I really get excited when I can get a distributor to cry when they talk about their why. Because then I know we hit a chord. I know that that why is so deep inside them that no matter what happens along the way, that they're going to do the activity that it's going to take because that why is strong. And for me, it was being able to stay home with my children because that was what I was going to have to actually go back to work when I found Use Plus 20 years ago. And for me, it was just not okay. It was not acceptable. acceptable. I you know, really wanted to be a mom and I didn't want somebody else raising my children. Now, I'm not judging around that. That was just for me. That was my heart's desire. Okay. So what I would love for you guys to do is write down three questions and they are on missiondrivenmodel.info. I'm sure Nikki and, and uh, Lisa, you guys use that. And there is a button that says why. Okay. And, uh, and so if I say these too fast, I'm hearing some people talk in the background. So if you've got noise, so go ahead and please mute yourself so it's not disrupting. But the three questions that I think is really important to spend the next 10, 15 minutes on after this call, just take this time 
and ask yourself, what is it that I want this business to do for me and my family? What do I, what do I want from this? And why do Oops. Okay, I need to unmute myself here. I can hear you, Diana. Oh, you can, okay. Yeah. Okay, you can hear me? Okay. Yeah. Because it said I was muted and I went, uh-oh. So, um, and then thirdly, what are you willing to do to get it? And I really equate that to time. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to commit? For me, it was cracks of time. You guys, I was a young mommy. I was 32. I couldn't sit at my desk for four or five hours a day. Are you kidding me? My kids would have killed each other, right? I had to build my business in cracks of time. So I really needed a plan, which we're going to talk about in a second. And what you want to do is once you answer these questions and put some thought into them, share them with your sponsor. Get on a Zoom call, get on a coaching call, meet for a cup of coffee, and share these three reasons why you want this business, okay? Tip number two, and this is something I did years and years ago, is I wrote out a mission statement for my life. And it wasn't just around my Juice Plus business, it was really what were the most important things to me in my life. And then what I did is I made choices in my life that were in alignment with my mission statement, with these priorities. For me, it was time with my husband. It was time with my children. It was time with my family and special friends. It was time in my personal faith. It was time to stay fit and be healthy. And, and exercise for me is is really my activity that helps me stay focused and balanced. And it's kind of like a Prozac for me, <laughs> a natural Prozac. And then it was time for travel and having awesome experiences with the people in my life. So I built my mission statement around that. But one of the most important things within that mission statement was also fiscal responsibility. That was critical and it was necessary to my mission statement. And I knew that building my Juice Plus business was how I was going to create a lifestyle that most people only dreamt about. I knew and I believed that there was nothing out there in terms of making money that could give me the lifestyle that I had envisioned for my future. Now, remember a key word here. I knew I was going to do it. I knew it. I believed it. Okay. I started saying no to things that took me away from my business and my mission statement. And they weren't in alignment with all of those things I just talked about. So room mom, PTA meetings, volunteer work, even though those are all important, I decided to let the other mommies who really wanted and needed those things in their life, because I really didn't want them or need them. I just felt guilty that I had to do them. Anybody watch Bad Moms? I might have been a bad mom. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I decided to have no guilt around it, honestly, because I was building my future. Are you kidding me? I was building a legacy, if you will, for my family. So I just started saying no to things that took me away from my business and weren't in alignment with that mission statement. Okay, so that was really important to me, and I knew I could build this legacy. So that's tip number two, okay, is that mission statement. Tip number three is visual, visualization. I believed and I visualized, I smelt it, I tasted it. I saw myself living this life that, that I now have. I visualized and I set the intention because if you haven't done that, you haven't realized how powerful intention and visualization is. It's why we were able to build our house. It's how I got the house that I'm in now. It's how I was able to take all these trips and put our kids through college and be debt free. I knew it. I tasted it. I smelled it. I visualized it. I saw myself on stage as a national marketing director with my three sons and my, and my husband. I saw it, right? And so if you're doubting, then you might need to take a look at this. So this idea of visualizing of knowing, seeing, believing is critical. And most people 
are not living the life that they had always dreamt about, like maybe when you were eight or 10 years old, right? Because they have been stuck in self-doubt their whole life. I see it over and over and over again when I'm coaching my team. So this leads me into tip number four. We need to change our paradigm. Our paradigm, a paradigm defined is simply a typical pattern of something. You can also think of a paradigm as a belief or beliefs. And let me give you an example of that. Let's say that you grew up believing that you weren't smart because you really struggled in school to get good grades and the best you could ever do was B's and C's. A's were just never part of your paradigm. And maybe your teacher told you that you were just, you were just average and your schoolmates always got better test scores than you did. You guys, this was me. This was my paradigm. I get emotional thinking about it. And I still joke in front of the room that, you know, I am, I'm that rec major from the biggest party school in California, and I went to college to get my MRS, my missus, <laughs> right? It's because I never believed that I was smart enough, and Chico State was the only college that would accept me. I mean, my God, I got on my SAT scores, they, my whole entire score was less than most, most people's math scores alone. And I am not joking. So this was my reality. And what I knew I was good at was extracurricular activities <laughs> at school. Anybody relate to that, right? I was good at them. I enjoyed them. They came easy to me. It was dance, cheerleading, ASB, choir. You know, I lived in this paradigm for over 25 years that I was never smart. And you guys, I've never shared that before until tonight. That was my paradigm. So when I started my Juice Plus business 20 years ago, I made a decision to change my paradigm. We can also just call them beliefs about ourselves. I started telling myself that I could be really smart and that I could get really that I could really get good at some simple activities. And I found that I was really good at building relationships. I really love people. And that I was really good in front of the room. I also found that I loved to teach. So I made a decision to continue to utilize the things that I was already good at. But I also made a decision, I'm saying decision a lot, right? to challenge myself in the areas that I knew were really important to my success, but they were things that I really didn't like to do, like following up. <laughs> Anybody avoid that? Because it's really uncomfortable. Well, I made this decision to do the things that I didn't like to do first, because then they were done and I didn't have to have them hanging over my head. Try that. It is liberating. Okay. So our fifth tip is really making a decision, right? You heard that. I said that a lot. So that's the fifth tip is that we made a decision. So these activities became a real natural part of my life and my business. It became a habit and it became my belief. This leads me to tip number six. My business activities became my DMO my daily method of operation. I wrote down every Sunday what my next week looked like. Who was I going to connect with? Who was I going to follow up with? And so on, right? And if you don't know, there is a DMO sheet on the missiondrivenmodel.info. And I teach this to my team and I teach them to do it every single week. But what I was finding is that no one was doing it. That was the paradigm. I was like, what? You know this is going to build success. Why aren't you doing it? So once I re re realized this, and it was just this summer, I've been doing this business for 20 years, and I realized even some of my leaders weren't doing this DMO, and gee, maybe that's why they were struggling. So this July, when I saw that I'd reach out on Boxer, and I heard crickets, you know what I'm talking about? Like, everybody's gone. Is everybody on vacation? Where is everybody? It's that summer slump, right? And I decided I needed to kick things in gear, and we were not going to have that summer slump. So I created some accountability groups on Boxer, 
and I've been working with them every single day. We started in, um, I think it was July. Yeah, it was like early July. And to be part of this group, they must post on Boxer their DMO plan for that upcoming week every Sunday night. And they must post the completed DMO plan by five o'clock on Saturday. And I wasn't grading what was on. I'm not grading what's on their DMO. I am just holding them accountable. That's my, I found that that would be a good thing for me to do. And it, it, I've got about 60 people I'm working with and I have four different groups. I've got DF to sales coordinators that want to fast track to sales coordinators. I have sales coordinators that want to fast track to SSC. I've got SSCs that want to get to Q and Q and MDs that want to get to NMD. And I got to tell you guys, it has been absolutely amazing. The light bulb moments for them and me that have occurred. And people are so afraid I'm going to kick them out of the group if they don't post their plan. And what I do is I have an Excel spreadsheet. So I go and it takes some time, but I found it's been really worth it. And I go through and if they didn't post their plan, both plans, right, the, the, the plan and then the completed plan, then I Voxer them. And these private Voxer messages have changed my business. It has changed my relationship with my team. So I have 12 national marketing directors, and there are a lot of those people that I really haven't had an opportunity to get to know. And so I, had, I made a boxer to all my NMDs, and I told them that I was going to do this and that I felt this was a way I could support them in their business. And so a lot of them took me up on it, and some didn't, but I ended up having about 60 people between all four groups. And what has happened in these private conversations, because I would say, hello, I noticed you didn't post your plan, and I didn't blame them, I didn't shame them, because you know what, that is so not productive. What I said was, tell me what's coming up for you, right? And then it was like, oh, my God, I just don't know what to do, or I was so busy, or I'm procrastinating, or what I noticed was all the blanks. And so if we need to have a coaching session with them around this challenge, then I know who to spend my time with because these people in the accountability group are the ones that are focused. They want this. And there were a lot that couldn't handle the heat and they kicked themselves out of the group. And that was okay because I just wanted to know who was focused. Where am I going to spend my time? Because as a leader, you really need to find out through that chess game. Really, I make a move, you make a move. Because people say they want it, but when push comes to shove and the heat gets too hot, that's when you know that good things are going to happen, but some people run away. They're just not ready for it, which is fine. But that, these accountability groups have worked really amazing. And this has become part of my DMO now as a leader. So if you've got some teams, I really would encourage you guys to maybe put some groups together or just buddy up and maybe a couple cross line. But it's really, really changed things. So tip number seven this was huge for me, and I hear this all the time, and, if you, and this is really if you only have children and littler children, but don't make your kids your excuse for not working your business. Make them the reason for building your business. I still work very hard at my business, and I'm still very intentional, intentional about my activities, and I focus on the activities that pay me. And when my kids were little, I had conversations with them about what mommy was doing that mommy was building an amazing business for the family. And because they were being so good and helpful and patient by letting me be on the phone, then we would have special things that we would do. We'd go miniature golf, we'd go to Disneyland, we'd go to the beach. You know, we, we had rewards because they were so good at really letting, you know, mom work and not resenting me and acting bad. I pulled them in and made them part of the business. They put stamps on the envelopes and labels, and it really, you know, when we'd have um, events at our home, they loved having company and helping get the water pitcher and put out the cups and plates and all that kind of stuff. So including your children is really, really important. So these activities 
that I really focus on, which kind of goes back a little bit to the DMO, but it really is, number one, identifying prospects from your memory jogger. Okay, we're identifying them and we're connecting, we're reaching out each and every week. And within the conversations that we have, we're looking for needs first. We're not jumping into Juice Plus. Well, you need Juice Plus. Oh my gosh, you need this. You need, and nobody likes to be told what they need, right? If we find that people are saying, oh my God, I'm tired all the time, or my kid's got the flu again, and he's on antibiotics again. I simply say, so tell me, what are you doing for that? What are you doing to help support his immune system? How do you feel about that? And we get into more dialogue, and then it's very easy for me to say later on in the conversation, oh my gosh, I have something that I think will really help your son. I tell my little story, and then I simply ask, you know, are you open to learning more about, you know, what's really been helpful for us? Can I share a video with you? You guys, it's so easy when you find a need, and it could be a need for the business too. Oh my gosh, I have something that I think will help you. And I usually say that when they say Juice Plus is too expensive. But if you go to missiondrivenmodel.info, on the top right hand, it says how to use the Mission Driven Model. I talk all about this. Okay, it's about a 30-minute Vimeo. So just know that the verbiage and everything is there. Like asking permission to share information with a prospect, asking permission and setting a day for follow-up with a prospect, closing a prospect really is, are you ready to get started once you've asked all their questions? All of this is on my call. Asking permission if you can do great customer care. People laugh when I say, you know what, I would really love to do great customer care for you. Is that okay? And they're like, really? Then they love the fact that you're reaching out because they're like, oh my gosh, and you're asking permission. So if you don't do customer care, you look like a flake, right? So doing awesome customer care will lead you into having the ability to invite people into your team. And I have a training that, and I can send it to you, Lisa and Nikki, it's a, it's a Vimeo, it's how to get organized, but it's all around the points chart on the mission-driven model. And it's, let me show you what your $50 buys you. Okay, and I might just record it so it's just even shorter. Um, but I could actually go into more, but I'm looking at time and right at 6.30, but I think that those are probably the most important things that I could share with you tonight that if you implement these things and really go back to your notes, go back to this recording and put some thought into it, I really think it's going to help you grow your business and you're going to have fun in the process. So, wow. Wow. <laughs> Deanna, I have like four pages of notes. I do. I have four pages of notes. I just want to clarify because I think you were cutting out between your phone and the Zoom. So the three questions at the beginning, your why were, what do I want this business to do for my family? That's number one. The mm -hmm. second is, what will that mean to me? Is that correct? Why do I want this? Why do I want this? Okay. People were asking. And I can send you my notes. Okay. Yeah, you want. Why do I want this? And number three, what are you willing to do to get it? What am I willing to get? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow, Deanna, this was amazing. You're the bomb. You are such a great trainer. You poured so much into this training. I hope you're able to use it again. <laughs> so. I think I will. I'm pretty excited about it. Good. I like, I've Good. used it. Yeah, <laughs> that was just a great training. It's concise. It's like straight talk. It's what everybody needs to hear. And I loved hearing, you know, especially your part when the kids were little. And I did the same thing. I said to my kids, what would you like in exchange for, for me building this business? And they became a part of it. And my girls were four and seven at the time. And they went off and had a conference. What did they want? They came back, they wanted to go to Hawaii. Like at four and seven, that was the deal. And a year later, we took them to Hawaii. So yep. they love this business. <laughs> it's awesome. That was a bad it mom really too. is. It's awesome. <laughs> Deanna, thank you so much. I know you're so busy getting ready for the regional. And if anyone lives in the Northern California area, I don't know if your regional is sold out yet. Is it sold out? No, it's not sold out, but you have to res uh, register by tomorrow at 2. Okay. And it's on SJPA Facebook. It's a public Facebook hey. Sacramento Juice Plus Association. So Oops. it's there. 
Okay, awesome. Yeah, because you know what? We all have people all over the state, so we want to plug them in. You're the best, Deanna. Love you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, you. You can, can you, thank you. Everybody can say thank you. And everybody have a great night. Bye bye. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you. Deanna. Thank You're you welcome. <laughs> Wow. <laughs>